Is a Hispanic candidate on either party's presidential ticket crucial to a win in 2016? Well, several prominent Hispanic Republicans are GOP ticket prospects, including Senators Marco Rubio and, of course, Ted Cruz. And today, New Mexico Governor Susana Martinez is getting campaign help from New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, sparking rumors that she's auditioning for a 2016 VP spot. But it's not only the GOP that needs Hispanic voters. Considering how crucial their turnout was in President Obama's wins, Democrats might be wise to pair their nominee with a Hispanic running mate as well. Well, here to discuss the field of potential picks is Bettina Inclan, a Republican strategist in Florida, Jorge Lima, policy director of the Libre Initiative, Matt A. Barreto, an associate professor of political science and co-founder of Latino Decisions, and Rosario Marin, former U.S. Treasurer under President George W. Bush. So an esteemed panel, I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. Uh, and Bettina, if I can, I'd like to start with you. So, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, Governor Christie. Christy Martinez kind of has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, you know, why is Governor Martinez getting so much attention? Well, because she's up for re-election. So, uh, first of all, Gloria Martinez is running for a re-election. She has incredible approval rating, and um, she's or governor, Chris Christie, is the head of the RGA. So it's only natural that he's in there making sure that as many Republican governors are reelected. And it brings a great point. The Hispanics and uh, the Republican Party has done a great job of elevating Hispanics to the positions, these high positions of leadership. You have Brian Sandoval, Martinez. So we've done a good job of elevating Hispanics to these high positions of people that are vice presidential um, nominee potentials. And the ironic thing in this instance, I guess, the Christy Martinez instance, is that you've kind of elevated uh, the VP potential almost more now than that presidential potential. Because uh, in the wake of Bridgegate, uh, you know, it, it seems and some people are saying, you know, it would be unlikely for, uh, for a Christy uh, Martinez. But, you know, is she the kind of candidate that you think could work with anyone, anyone else that would be the president on that ticket? Martinez is an incredible governor. She's an incredible woman, a real inspiration. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to listen to her story, but it's incredibly compelling from where she grew up to how she became governor. And even it's a great story to tell to Hispanics. She's someone who used to be a Democrat, switched over to the Republican Party, because she realized that all of her values, even though she grew up in a Democratic household, connected um, with, she was more like a Republican. It was just, it was a more natural fit. So it's a great, compelling story. Um, she got a lot of attention when she spoke at the national convention. And you'll, you're going to keep on hearing rumors about her for VP and maybe even president. She has what it takes to be a presidential candidate as well. But a sure, woman and a Hispanic. I was going to say, but, you know, surely, I mean, I, I, let, listen, I would love to see a, a woman on the presidential ticket. But surely, wouldn't that be a, wouldn't that be a push too far? Not just Why? a woman president. Well, not just a woman president, but look at the landscape. I mean, people are saying... It's America. You know, Anything is possible. She's an incredible governor, incredible woman. I, just because she's a minority, I don't think it limits her, her opportunities. I think it's not so much that she's a minority, it's that she's a she. She's a woman. I think that that in itself, like, you know, before you even get into minority, uh, uh, whether you're a minority or not, I think that, you know, so just the fact that, you know, you're a woman in and of itself can be a little bit tricky to to kind of get over. But, you know, let, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about something else that you mentioned, which was the kind of relatability, right? You know, in The Nation mm -hmm. uh, recently, commentators Bob and Barbara Dreyfus acknowledge that Christie's campaigning on behalf of Governor Susana Martinez. But they say, quote, any idea that simply nominating a Hispanic woman is enough to corral lots of Hispanic votes ignores the fact that on substance, the Republicans have alienated immigrants by the refusal to move forward on reform, not to mention reactionary Republican views on issues that matter to Hispanics, such as health care reform, job creation, the minimum wage, and a host of other issues. Rosario, I want to bring you in. Republicans are facing an uphill battle for Hispanic votes, and it's not letting up on issues important to Hispanic voters. So would a Hispanic GOP candidate as VP be enough to attract voters in 2016? Well, first of all, I think your premise and whoever those wonderful people are, they just mentioned what they have to say. Um, I think it's the wrong, they're using the wrong premise. First of all, Latinos will vote for an individual, number one. Number two, Susana Martinez or any other governor or senator right now that is Latino, that is Republican, has tremendous accomplishments under their belt. Far more than, might I say, our current president, who had literally no experience whatsoever. Susana Martinez is an executive. In her own right, if she wanted to, if she, she desired, she could seek the presidency. 
if she wants to seek the vice president, if she wants, if somebody wants to offer her the vice presidency, that would be fine too. But she has significant accomplishments under her belt. And to suggest that Latinos or Hispanics will not vote for a Latino, uh, I'm sorry about that, um, because of other problems that other Republicans have, I think it's underestimating the intelligence of the Hispanic voter. And, you know, far from, uh, far from anyone to do that. Uh, I think that uh, what's interesting about all of this as well is that people think this is a GOP issue, but it's not, is it? It's, it's uh, multiple parties. It's both parties. So, you know, Jorge, that people think that the GOP is, uh, is the only one, and that's what's been kind of billed as uh, the problematic platform for Hispanic voters. But this new study by Pollster Latino Decisions found that President Obama's deportation record uh, has been slightly problematic as well. He's deported about one and a half times as many migrants as George W. Bush, which is a staggering statistic, and it's hurting his popularity with young Latinos. So should President Obama be loosening up on deportations for the sake of the party in 2016? Well, well he should be loosening... Here. Yeah, go for it. He should okay, be loosening... Yeah. He's be, he should be loosening up um, or providing relief where he can, not for the party, but for the Hispanic community overall. But, you know, going to your first question, just putting a, a Hispanic on the VP ticket is not enough. Um, as Bettina mentioned, as Rosario mentioned, you know, this is a very smart community. Uh, it's all about policies. Just because you have a Spanish last name and you're on the VP ticket doesn't mean that Hispanics are going to vote for you now. That's not to say there are identity votes. I mean, Pew Hispanic put out a poll last year that showed that uh, more than three quarters of Hispanics want a Hispanic leader for the nation. Uh, but the same amount couldn't identify one. And so, you know, these leaders need to come out. They need to to kind of represent there. But it's not just a name or whether you speak Spanish or English. It's what your policies are. And Hispanics want to connect on the policies that are going to improve their lives. You know, going back to the quote you mentioned um, from the I believe it was from the national, you know, they they highlight what the Hispanics have failed, what the Republicans have failed at. But this administration has failed Hispanics. And that's why we're seeing this huge shift. The Democrats can't take Hispanics for granted uh, I mean, out of know, any what? demographic. They've Jorge, moved away from Obama. Oh, Jorge, to your point as well, you know, the news in the last 24 hours is that, you know, President Obama's delayed the deportation review uh, get to give uh, the immigration bill a chance. And you've got this headline here on the LA Times. Uh, we followed up as well on the Huffington Post uh, with the DHS secretary facing attacks from the House GOP over immigration review. And as Zach Carter, our very own political economy reporter, tweeted quite rightly, uh, great Elise Foley piece, Obama stalls deportation reform to win over GOP and GOP calls for more deportations. Matt, what's going on here? <laughs> I think that says it well in that tweet right there. Um, there certainly is a disconnect um, between uh, Republican Party right now in the House uh, and immigration reform. Immigration reform uh, continues to be an issue that is dominating the agenda and the landscape. Something does need to be done about that. I think uh, almost nobody would disagree that something needs to be done. Uh, and the president is accountable for that as well, as you said, uh, and showed a chart from some studies that we had put together. Um, he has deported more uh, Latino families and Latino immigrants than any other president. And so I think this issue is, continues to be on the agenda. Both parties will benefit from having this issue put to rest, from moving forward with immigration reform. Uh, and then being able to move on and discuss uh, other issues and, and address other issues of concern to the Latino community. Yeah. But th there's no, I mean, there can be no debate about the status of immigration reform in, in the House right now. The Senate did their job. They passed a bill. And the House has an opportunity to act. If nothing happens, uh, we'll know who, who will be to blame for that. Bettina, what do you think of that? Well, I think immigration is, is a really important issue. I think a lot of us have said it's not the only issue. I do think that it's been a political football by both parties on, on, on this issue. And I would love for a resolution. I would love something to happen. But um, Hispanics were 50 million strong. They were an incredibly diverse community that some of us have been here for 400 years. Some of us have been here for two years. And there's, a, there's not a one size fits all policy to connect with the Hispanic community. And as more and more political, the political parties understand this and the better can communicate, They'll see more because as much as Obama did win Hispanics, there's a lot more Hispanics that did not vote in 2012. And there's a there's a reason for that. They feel like no one's talking to them. So both parties have to do a better job of reaching out to Hispanic voters and tell them why they want their vote.
Well, you know, you're, you're quite right in, so, in saying and addressing the idea that both parties could probably be doing a much better job. Uh, and it's something that was taken to task recently. Let's take a look at an exchange between Republican House Speaker John Boehner, who was talking to Jorge Ramos of Univision. This is on May 22nd. Take a listen. Mr. Speaker, uh, we came here to ask you why are you blocking immigration reform? It's been almost a year since the Senate Me? passed. Me? Yes, you're blocking? Uh, yeah, you could bring it to a vote and you haven't. It's been, it's been almost a year since the Senate Well, the issue of immigration reform. reform is an issue that I've talked about uh, for 18 months. Uh, but the president, the president has responsibility here as well. And when he continues to ignore uh, Obamacare, his own law, 38 unilateral delays, he reduces the confidence of the American people in his willingness uh, to implement an immigration law the way we would pass it. What that has to do with, with the immigration reform? It's, the Senate passed it almost a year ago, and you haven't moved on that. So I just gave you. I just gave. Your vision on I just gave you an answer. There's nobody more interested in fixing this problem than I am. But you can do it. But the president. No, well, listen. You can president, do it, Mr. Speaker. You can do it, and you really haven't done it. I appreciate your, your opinion. Thank you. Ouch. Uh, Rosario, I mean, how potent is Ramos's point there that Boehner could have done something already, but he hasn't managed to convince his own party to act? Well, I think that uh, the speaker has certainly, the his heart is in the right place when it comes to immigration. His concern, and that is voicing the concerns of many of the Republicans who feel that they cannot trust this president to implement the law, and clearly, the president has only himself to blame. What the speaker was attempting to say, and unfortunately, Ramos did not allow him to, to, to state the point, was the, there are Republicans who are clearly want to move on this, but the history of this president changing the law 36 times, a law that he himself pushed for, and he now during implementation is changing it 36 times, does not bode well for an immigration reform, whatever it is that they could even pass, sure. to, 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 to accept that maybe he will, maybe he won't uh, but Rosario, uh, implement it the way that, that, that it's been passed. That's very serious. But Rosario, that do you think that the GOP... Lack of trust. Rosario, do you think they don't know, do you not think that the GOP risks kind of shooting themselves in the foot? Because it's one thing to sort of, you know, kind of point at the Democrats and say, well, we don't trust them to implement this. But then it puts them in a really odd position, doesn't it? Because if you, they, if, you know, they're sort of saying, oh, we are really serious about uh, immigration reform, but we just don't trust these guys to do it. Uh, and actually, as one of our commenters puts it quite rightly, Noah says the Democrats are actually losing the Hispanic vote. Immigration reform has failed miserably under President Barack Obama. The GOP just needs to actually offer an actual solution for immigration reform, then they have a chance at the Latino vote. Uh, it's that actual uh, actual solution that kind of seems to be missing if they say, well, we just haven't really done that yet because those guys won't be able to implement it. They're, they're in a sticky situation here, right? Well, one of the things that the Speaker Boehner has said, and, and I agree with him, maybe what we need to do is... Uh, Face it, make sure that first phase, we secure the border. Second phase, we uh, immigrate this group of people. Third phase, third phase, I'm sorry. And if we do it in this phases approach, I believe we have a better chance than trying to eat the whole enchilada as the Senate attempted to do. We know for a fact that trying to do reform, just like we did the healthcare reform, has been an unqualified disaster. Why would we want to have another mess when when we know the previous mess has been already uh, indescribable. Okay, let's. So let, let, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just going to say let's. I, I want to move on because I just I'm mindful of time, so I want to get on to some of the other candidates in the field because we mentioned Martinez obviously at the top, uh, but you know there are other a whole kind of roster really of other potential GOP VP candidates that would fit this kind of billing. Uh, one of them, of course, is Marco Rubio. Uh, and, but he's made some political missteps, hasn't he? I mean, he, he he's keeps making news now uh, for refusing to say whether he smoked pot. Uh, you know, Bettina, why do you think he's avoiding the Why avoid the question? Surely just like say yes or no, get it out of the way. <laughs> It's a stupid question. Like, let's talk about how people don't have jobs. Let's talk about the economy. Let's talk about education. Let's well, talk about things that impact people's life. 
Like, w- this is why people get upset at the media. Like, why don't we talk about policy issues that are really impacting people? Hispanics, want, their number one issue is, uh, uh, on top of jobs and the economy, is education. People come to this country for a better education. Let's have that conversation. Let's talk about the programs that he is talking about to reduce um, the the income inequality. Let's talk about how to get more jobs. Let's talk about those issues. I think Marco Rubio has done an incredible job of talking about that kind of stuff. And those real policy issues, not stupid stuff. Well, I think drugs, you know, the, the idea of drugs in general is a pretty big policy That's, issue the anyway. Not, the question was not about drugs. The question was about what he had done. Those are two different types of things. But you know, this so, is the kind of thing Marco that we Rubio, ask. But this there, is the kind of thing that the, the, the general public, I mean, I'm not talking necessarily just kind of as to kind of the tit for tat that goes on in Washington, but, you know, the general public, we're all curious about that kind of thing. We asked it of President Obama, famously in that interview that he did on ABC, yeah, and they, uh, you know, and, and people asked, ask about and it. They, yeah, and they also asked, like, President um, Clinton, like, what his underwear was. Like, that's not important stuff. Let's talk the about Republicans real Republicans loved it when they asked him that, though. Oh, come on. Loved it. We can talk about Marco Rubio. You, you can talk about Brian Sandoval. There's a lot of great Hispanic Republican candidates. There's a lot of great Hispanic leaders, and it's a great time to be in this, uh, to be a Hispanic in this country. All right, Jorge, hey, what do you think about that? I, I mean, I agree with Bettina. There, there's a number of issues that we should be talking about. Why is it when we bring up you know, Marco Rubio, we're talking about his drug use versus uh, talking about his efforts on immigration. I mean, we, we just went through a whole segment on immigration reform, how Republicans need to do more. Marco Rubio was leading the charge on the Senate side. Why isn't that what they're talking about? Mm-hmm. If rather than just focusing on the lack of Republicans doing anything on immigration, here was Rubio. Let's let's hear him talk about that. You know, wh- where was that question? Where is that news story? Uh, um, yeah, I guess... Uh, okay, well, Rosario, it looks like you want to jump in. What, what do you have to say well, about that? Well, the only reason why we even had a discussion on immigration reform is because of the efforts of uh, Marco Rubio. Quite frankly, we wouldn't even have this dreamer situation, the defer action, if it had not been for Marco Rubio saying that he was going to have a find a legislative solution to this, and the president, who, who will not miss an opportunity for political um, uh, uh, for, to increase his political acumen, he actually jumped in the gun and did this through an administrative process. We owe, if we're even discussing immigration, we owe it to Marco Rubio, and, and he's not getting the credit for it. As a matter of fact, I mean, you you have just said that. You know, Republicans are perceived as uh, not do, wanting to do immigration reform, when in fact it was Marco that started it because this president, the, Democ- the Democrats, wouldn't even touch it. Well, so I want to very, you know, very quickly before we have to move on, I'm really kind of concerned about time. But, uh, you know, is that a fault, do you think, within the GOP itself? I mean, is that really symptomatic of, you know, they're not allowing somebody like maybe Rubio to kind of take the floor in the way that he should be then? Because if, you know, if, if we see and all we're sort of seeing kind of on the um, on the outside of things is, is Boehner kind of coming out and being quite sort of stalwart about it and saying, well, we kind of have to stall because of the president. I mean, is that the wrong tactic? Do you think that they should be saying, hey, instead of what we're not doing and that we can't do anything because of the Democrats will be able to implement anything. Why aren't they then shining a light instead on Marco Rubio and saying, hey, we're the party that's doing something? Um, I believe that is, is, is very important. And he did. And remember, he went around and talked to, I think, every single Sunday show. He took that. He took it as far as he could. It got passed in the Senate. And so now it's up to the Congress. But I believe uh, Speaker Boehner has a better a path. I think it has to be on a face. And, and and believe it or not, and I just saw Speaker Boehner in, in Texas not like a couple of weeks ago. He is trying to do everything he can, but it's the lack of trust with this president that is preventing many Republicans from saying we should do this. I would hope and I trust that more and more Republicans agree that we need to do uh, immigration reform. We do it before the end of this year. Well, let's, let's pivot now to uh, another potential Latino candidate for the VP side of things. This time, a, a Democrat, San Antonio Mayor uh, Julian Castro. Uh, you know, and he's been discussed uh, whilst he's, you know, only at the moment a mayor. He's been kind of fast tracked, uh, hinted to be the next Secretary of Housing and Urban Development by President Obama. So, Matt, what do you think? Could he be a good running mate if, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton is the uh, the woman uh, on the ticket come 2016? Yeah, I think, you know, on the Democratic side um, there, and this is the point you made earlier, there is uh, not nearly as deep of a bench as some of these Republican 
statewide elected officials that we've been talking about already. Uh, and Castro would certainly be at the top of that list. He's young. He's energetic. Uh, he uh, has a, a similar sort of message of, of, uh, of hope and moving the country forward uh, that we had seen in the past. Uh, and so I think Castro is someone that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, also gave a very, very effective speech at the uh, Democratic uh, convention. Uh, Betty mentioned uh, Susana Martinez's speech at the Republican convention. So he was sort of on that side. After Castro, though, uh, you don't see as deep of a bench. You don't see as many Latinos uh, who have been elected to statewide office or prominent positions uh, who, who might be sort of vice presidential material, which I think puts even then more focus on a Julian Castro he, because he sort of becomes the, uh, the uh, only sort of uh, shining example on the Democratic side. Uh, but he has very strong approval ratings among Latinos. When we've tested him in polls, uh, people like him. Uh, they could resonate with his story. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, he's someone that would be taken seriously uh, similar to some of these uh, Republican candidates we've mentioned before. And you know, Matt, that one of the interesting things obviously about Castro is that, you know, he isn't fluent in Spanish. Uh, and, you know, that's a point actually made by Florida GOP Rick Wilson, uh, you know, and he, he tweeted about this. He said, for all the gushing about Julian Castro, so few of the press actually cover that he doesn't speak Spanish. But of course, uh, you know, Ted Cruz isn't either. He's not fluent in Spanish either. Uh, you know, Jorge, what do you think? I mean, how much of a barrier really is that when it comes to uh, appealing to our Latino voter base? Sure. I mean, I think no one's going to dispute the fact that being bilingual is a benefit. I mean, it would be great if, if uh, more, more politicians spoke Spanish. However, like putting someone on a Hispanic on the VP, like just passing immigration, speaking Spanish is not a windfall that will automatically win over the Hispanic vote. It is good when someone, when a politician speaks Spanish, it feels that they're making an effort to the community and they, you know, the community embraces that. But beyond that, it's what are they saying in Spanish? And if the community doesn't agree with the policies or think that that is what's going to help them live prosperously, then it doesn't gain you anything. And so putting Julian Castro, you know, trying to bring him up from a mayor to a cabinet member so that suddenly we can, Democrats could put him on a ticket. I mean, it, it, it when you talk about whether that's going to add value, I think a lot of that's just kind of saying, well, we're now concerned about losing the Hispanic vote. We're going to put him on a ticket to see if that helps the situation. But if he, you know, it depends on what he's saying. If he's going to sell the same kind of ideas that have been under the current administration, Hispanics are not finding it worth their while. Well, I think that's an interesting point because, you know, you could argue that, say, like former Florida Governor Jeb Bush, I mean, you know, he, he would ace a Spanish uh, exam. He is pretty darn fluent in Spanish. And, you know, but I like what you're sort of saying there, Jorge, about the fact that, you know, when it comes to the Latino voter base, it isn't about the language you speak, but it's about the issues you speak about. Uh, you know, Bettina, Absolutely. I know that the Republican uh, Republicans have been uh, meeting with Hispanic voters in at least 10 states to glean what they're looking for in a candidate. Uh, you know, so they're they're pouring money, they're pouring time and effort into this voter base. What exactly are they doing? What are they trying to elicit from this exercise? I think yeah, as someone that worked on the uh, McCain, Bush and Romney, was very involved in the Romney campaign. We, there was a huge lesson. We didn't put enough resources early on in creating a structure. The, the Obama campaign, they had an entire structure reaching out to not only Hispanics, but all different diverse voting blocks from, you know, from 2007. So what there are not seeing the Republican Party has been doing is putting people on the ground and having a long-term strategy, which is necessary to have real relationships with voters on the ground and creating a dialogue, not just parachuting in and say, hey, you're important. Because at the end, like, I, I kind of talk about this a lot with a campaign, Teddy Roosevelt quote, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So we have to do a better job to making sure that Hispanic voters know that we as Republicans care about their issues, care about their lives, care about how, what policies are impacting them and how they can live truly the American dream. And so, you know, one of the ways they could do that, I guess, uh, is looking at Texas, because in the Lone Star State, uh, the Republicans are making far more inroads, it seems, with the Latino community than uh, in anywhere else in the country. Uh, you know, the rest of the country, there's a 30 percent difference between the uh, the voter base between the GOP and the Democrats. And Texas is only 19 percent. Uh, you know, Rosario, do you think that this is where uh, the GOP should be looking? They should be using Texas as kind of like a, you know, let's emulate what we're doing there all over the country. 
As a matter of fact, Texas is doing a great job. But, you know, Chris Christie got more than 50 percent of the Latino vote on his reelection. And Susana Martinez did quite a lot of campaigning for him as well. Um, Texas is doing very, very well. We will have George B. there as uh, land commissioner. Uh, Rick Perry has tremendous rapport with the Hispanic community. Jeb Bush, are you kidding? He was loved in the Hispanic community in Florida and across the United, Na the United States because uh, the Latino community thinks very, very highly of him. Not only does he speak Spanish, but he has done a tremendous job on education and job creation for Hispanics. Uh, we have a pretty good bench. I mean, you're talking about Brian Sandoval has done an amazing job for Latinos in Nevada. And of course, Ted Cruz and, 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 and Marco Rubio. We have a plethora of Republicans that have catered to the Hispanic community throughout their political lives. And I think when they are on the ticket, that the Hispanic community will reward them for all of, uh, of, of all of their efforts, the previous efforts. Uh, well, we are. We thank you so much for your comments, and we're, we're running a little bit out of time. But I just want to ask this one final question. You know, it, we're a year and a half away-ish uh, from the primaries. So, uh, you know, if there was like one defining thing that the GOP needs to do between now and then, Bettina, what do you think it is? What do they need to do in order to secure the Latino vote come 2016? I think a lot continue putting a lot of resources in front of what they're doing of having a real grassroots strategy, mobilizing people, talking to voters, and not just wait until September to start a strategy. I think it's incredibly important to have a long-term dialogue in English, Spanish, and whatever language they want to make sure that they feel that it is important that their vote's important. And Matt, same question to you. What do you think? What do you think the Democrats need to do uh, in order to secure that Latino vote? Well, I think the Democrats need to not take the Latino vote for granted. I mean, um, with all of the uh, uh, excitement here from these uh, uh, Republican colleagues uh, of mine here on this panel, you would think that they did well in 2012. Of course, it was their worst year in the history of the Republican Party with Latino. But what the Democrats have to do is not take that for granted. They need to put the effort into getting out the Latino vote uh, to continuing to have discussions with Latinos. But both parties need to do that. And I'll say they have to move on the immigration issue. They can't let this immigration issue linger and be there for, for folks to uh, politicize. Both parties need to work on that. And I think then that will give both parties an opportunity uh, to move forward and, and have uh, more sincere dialogues with Latino voters in 2016. Well, absolutely. And uh, I just want to end on this tweet that kind of echoes that Ed McCarthy over Twitter uh, tweeted at me and said, if Republicans put an Hispanic on the ticket, will the Dems better do so as well? Uh, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me. Bettina, Jorge, Matt and Rosario, thank you very much for joining me on HuffPost Live today. Pleasure to have you.